Good evening everybody. It is June 14th and tonight's video is going to be pretty special. It's going to be all about tomatoes. But it's going to be about tomato varieties that are lesser known and perhaps you haven't even heard of them before. Tomatoes are by far the most common vegetable grown in the United States. If you are a gardener and you subscribe to this channel, you probably grow tomatoes. They're very, very popular. But the problem with that is, unfortunately, tomatoes are one of the most difficult things to grow. They require very, very specific uh, temperatures that you don't get for very long in the United States. They want to be between 55 degrees at night and 85 degrees in the day. They're also very susceptible to pests. They're very susceptible to diseases. They are a really tough plant to grow and manage compared to a lot of other plants in your garden. So, I wanted to touch on some much, much easier to manage types of tomatoes. One of my goals on this channel is to promote the Dwarf Tomato Project. Most people have never heard of Dwarf Tomatoes, and uh, those that have are probably pretty reluctant to grow them. Dwarf Tomatoes just don't sound that appetizing. They just don't sound as good. They sound like they're going to be really small, less desirable tomatoes. And before I get into uh, dwarf tomatoes, I want to show you these. These two beds right here, here on the left and here on the right, are indeterminate tomatoes. When you think of tomatoes, you probably think of indeterminates. Indeterminate tomatoes grow as a vine. They will grow from when you plant the seed all the way until they are killed off from frost and pests. If they do not get killed off by frost and pests, if the climate was ideal, uh, they could live for years. They will grow all over the ground, and the reason why we stake or we trellis them is because tomatoes are so weak when it comes to pests and diseases, you want to keep them off the ground because they will, uh, they will die an early death. Uh, they will die an early death if you leave them on the ground. The problem with indeterminate tomatoes is they take up a ton of space. All of these are six to seven feet tall. This bed has been in the ground since about March 15th. Uh, this bed right here went in the ground about April 1st. That's why there's still a lot more tomatoes on them. Uh, they haven't ripened. Uh, most of these have been picked clean. And the big challenge with these tomatoes are keeping them alive. I have a very hot, humid, summery climate, and some of my tomatoes are already starting to get diseases. Here you see pink brandywines. They're already starting to get some dye off on their bottom leaves. It looks like this leaf right here, it's starting to get a little bit of leaf spot. You'll see that there's only two tomatoes left on the bottom. It's so hot now at night. Uh, none of the tomatoes are setting. Uh, the flowers are dropping. It's just too warm at night for them to set fruit. So I don't know how much more mileage I'm going to get out of these tomatoes that are already three months old. These tomatoes here, they still have a lot more on the bottom because they're only two and a half months old. But as you can see, there are still no tomatoes up top. They're already kind of wimping out on me. I'm not going to get probably a whole lot more of a season out of these tomatoes. The other thing you'll notice about these tomatoes are they take up so much space, but they're not particularly prolific. Uh, these are almost all brandy wine varieties. They just don't set a whole lot of fruit. It's just the nature of an heirloom tomato. They take up a huge footprint in your garden. They take up a lot of space. In order to get decent production and promote airflow, you have to prune them. They're, they're just a lot of work. You need staking or trellising. You have to prune them constantly. You have to spray them if you live in a disease-prone environment. They are not the easiest vegetable in the world to grow. And if you live in a warm climate like mine, by the time end of June, July rolls around, you start running out of tomatoes. Your only real hope is to find very prolific varieties. Like this steak sandwich hybrid is doing very, very well. It's giving me twice as much fruit as the heirlooms. And this variety right here is a fantastic surprise. This is called Stump of the World. It is an heirloom, and it's one of the most prolific I've ever seen. I might continue to grow that, but then the one behind it actually isn't being prolific at all. So they're, they're very, very temperamental. So what I want to do is I want to show you the dwarf tomatoes and, the, and my determinate tomatoes that I'm growing because they are so much more, uh, they're so much easier to grow and manage. 
First, I want to show you this determinate tomato. This is called a Celebrity. It is an All America Selection winner. And I've already picked a number of tomatoes off this plant, and you will see, despite the fact that it's only about three and a half feet tall, it is just loaded with tomatoes, and every single one of them are perfect. Look at that tomato right there. All of my indeterminate tomatoes have cracked on me this year, but the celebrities have not cracked at all. They're the only one out of all of these indeterminates over here, except the Brandywine Yellow. The Brandywine Yellow did not crack for me. But this celebrity has not cracked at all. Not a single tomato. And I've already picked about a half a dozen fruits off here. You will see how beautiful this plant is. It is just loaded with fruit. They're all over the place. And I've gotten more fruit set on this little tiny three foot tall plant than I have on any of these gigantic six, seven, eight feet tall indeterminates. And the cool thing about determinate tomatoes are you don't prune them at all. Um, whereas indeterminate tomatoes will keep growing until they're killed by pests, disease, or frost, these determinate tomatoes, like the celebrity, will grow to a predetermined height which is usually about three to four feet, they'll set all of their fruit at once and they'll die back. So what I'm going to do next year is I'm actually going to grow less of the indeterminates because there's so much work and they require so much maintenance. Instead, I'm just going to grow a hedge of tomatoes. I'm going to grow a hedge of celebrities because they're so good that will run across this bed and I'm just going to Florida weave them with short stakes because they're so easy. They require none of the maintenance, they're so much more disease resistant, and they taste fantastic. It is a similar situation with these dwarf tomatoes. When you think dwarf tomatoes, you probably think of plants that will make smaller tomatoes, but dwarf tomatoes actually make nice six to nine ounce fruits. They're, they're not one pound beef steaks typically, but they're a really, really nice, uh, most of the varieties are really nice slicing tomatoes. These are all Dwarf Tomato Project varieties. So what you see here is an Adel uh, what you see here is a Rosella Purple. You'll see that this bush has been mostly picked clean. So there's not too many tomatoes left on this. Uh, the <clears throat> this is also another Rosella Purple. You'll see there's several tomatoes back there. There's there's another one. You'll see them. There's fruit clusters all over. There's more setting up here. And the taste of this Rosella Purple variety is absolutely fantastic. It tastes exactly like a Cherokee Purple. Uh, these are Adelaide Festivals over here. You can see all the fruit hanging off of it here. All the fruit hanging off of it here. And then this is Brandy Fred back here. There are tomatoes setting right here. This one's about ready to be picked off. So, despite the fact that these are only three foot tall plants, they are actually very prolific. They set a lot of fruit for their size. You can see how many tomatoes there still are back here. The dwarf tomatoes continue to set fruit. Something that is really amazing about these dwarf tomatoes is, is how early they tend to be. All the way over here to the right, the bed furthest to the right, I planted those indeterminate tomatoes about March 15th, and there was still a chance of a late season frost for us at that point. So I would cover them up at night with five gallon buckets just in case. And the reason why I did this was to get a jump start on the season. So all the tomatoes in that bed for the most part are 70 to 80 day tomatoes according to the seed packet. I didn't plant these dwarf tomatoes until about April 1st, a full two weekends behind the other, the other indeterminate tomatoes. And despite that fact, I was picking tomatoes off these plants an entire week before I was picking uh, tomatoes off the indeterminates. So in reality, these were about three weeks ahead of my indeterminates, despite the fact that the seed packets all said they were 70 to 80 day tomatoes. I was eating off these plants in the middle of May. That's why they've been mostly picked clean by now. I don't want you to think that these are not prolific plants. They are. I've just been eating off of them for an entire month. They were my first, uh, they were my first 
Ripe Tomatoes, the Rosella Purple, and the Adelaide Festival. They came very, very early. One of the other awesome things about these dwarf tomatoes is that they are all open pollinated varieties. And I want to clear up some language that a lot of people are confused about with tomatoes. Uh, when people hear the word open pollinated, uh, that phrase simply means that you can save the seed and that they will grow true to type next year. If I save the seed from the Rosella Purple or the Adelaide Festival or the Brandy Fred, if I save the seeds and I plant them next year, they will grow true to type. They will not be something else. When we talk about hybrid tomatoes, a hybrid tomato is a cross that is not stable yet. If I were to take one of my hybrid tomatoes, like my Burpee Steak Sandwich Hybrid, and I save the seed and I plant it next year, uh, that I'm going to get a plant that is not exactly the same. It will resemble one of the parents that it is crossed with more. They're not stable. So, because the Dwarf Tomato Project is fairly new, um, the uh, there are no heirloom tomatoes. All an heirloom tomato is is an open pollinated tomato that is 50 years or older that has a 50 year or longer lineage. So when people when people say hybrid, that doesn't mean a cross. Every single tomato was crossed with another tomato at some point. Even heirlooms that have been around for a hundred something years, they were at some point crossed. So a hybrid simply means that you can't save the seed and they'll grow true to type. All of the Dwarf Tomato Project tomatoes are, uh, are open pollinated. It's a commitment of the project. So you can save all your seeds. Once you buy a packet, you can keep your seeds every single year and you won't have to keep buying them if you don't want to. Now earlier we talked about indeterminate versus determinate tomatoes. Indeterminate tomatoes are the vine type tomatoes that will grow until they're either killed off by disease, pests, or frosts. Whereas the determinate tomato, like the beautiful celebrities that I, that I just picked for you and showed you, uh, they will grow to a predeterminate height, uh, usually about three to four feet tall. They tend to ripen their fruit all at once, and then the plant will die back. A determinate tomato is a bush type. It is not a vine type. So that is why you don't need to prune them. All you need to do is give them a little bit of light staking or, or a Florida weave works really, really well for them. The cool thing about the dwarf tomatoes is they come in both indeterminates and determinates. So despite the fact that they're only about three feet tall on average, you can still get an indeterminate tomato. And they will keep producing and producing and producing and producing for you which is why you see all these brand new flowers on this, uh, this three month old rose uh, rosella purple. As long as the temperatures agree, and we have a little cool front right now, uh, there's a chance that some of these flowers may actually turn into tomatoes for me. I wanna show you something pretty amazing. Here are two dwarf tomatoes I started all the way back last October. These are eight months old. And believe it or not, I actually picked the first tomato off of my Rosella Purple here in the middle of March. And one thing that I noticed here is that uh, these tomatoes are actually isolated on the east side of my house. So they only get the morning sun and they are still setting fruit all the way up. You can see there's another one back behind here. They're setting fruits whereas the ones in my garden are not, which are faced due south. And I think that's because the morning sun is a lot cooler so they don't get the extreme hot temperatures in the afternoon. You'll see these plants are just absolutely loaded. There's, there's more of them back here. It's really quite remarkable. It's amazing because these are such old plants. They're eight months old and they're still kicking butt for me. You can see the clusters of fruit hanging down here. Big ones over here. They're setting more up top and because these are indeterminates, they will keep growing. If you can keep them alive, they will stay alive and growing and setting fruit for you. I noticed a similar phenomenon over here with my dwarf tomatoes. Whereas all of my indeterminate tomatoes are naked up top, they're not setting any fruit in the heat, the dwarf tomatoes still seem to be setting fruit up top. If I take you around here, you can still see all the way up top, there are fruit clusters there. 
And these flowers, whereas the flowers on my indeterminates are mostly black and dropping, these flowers look really healthy. They're still doing a pretty good job at setting fruit. And I think it's because they are shading each other out. Here you can see another fruit cluster way down there. So again, it's quite remarkable how little work these tomatoes are, whereas it's so much work staking or trellising and pruning and maintaining the large indeterminates, you can plant these together at very high density, they'll shade each other out, protect each other, still set fruit in hot temperatures, and they'll keep growing and growing and growing as long as the season allows them to, with comparatively very little maintenance. I have done virtually nothing but water this bed here. I spend very little time in here and they were my first and earliest tomatoes and they still continue to produce whereas these two beds where I spend a tremendous amount of time are starting to uh, decline in production and wimp out on me already. But none of that means anything if they don't taste very good. So I have a number of beautiful tomatoes to taste test. This one right here is a Rosella Purple. It is a Dwarf Tomato Project tomato and it is just like a Cherokee purple and tastes almost the same. That is 7.25 ounces. This is a Brandy Fred which is a cross between I believe a Dwarf Wild Fred and a Pink Brandy wine. Very excited to try that. Weighing in at 6.2 ounces. I have the Adelaide Festival tomato which I taste tested recently. Beautiful delicious variegated tomato at exactly 5 ounces. And then my beautiful determinate celebrity. These are perfect tomatoes. They produce some of the most beautiful fruits. That weighs a whopping 13.45 ounces. That's one of the heaviest tomatoes I've had all year. So we are going to start with the Rosella Purple, which has been one of my favorites for the past two years. This is a dead ringer for Cherokee Purple. Beautiful, beautiful fruits. You can see how wonderfully meaty they are. That's a dwarf tomato right there. You'd never know that wasn't an heirloom. And the flavor. It is just incredible. It is so sweet and so juicy and so rich. If you put that side by side to a Cherokee purple, you, you'd never know. It is that good. Now we're going to try the Brandy Fred which I'm very excited to try. And I think, honestly, this could have used another day to ripen. But wow. That is a meaty tomato. There's almost no gel inside. It looks beautiful. I can't wait to see how it tastes. Oh, wow. Oh, that is so good. But this could have used another day to ripen because it's just a little bit too firm, but it is absolutely delicious. This tastes like a cross between a Cherokee Purple and a brandy wine. This is absolutely fantastic. The yields on this plant have not been as good as some of the other dwarfs, but wow, this is absolutely delicious. Mmm. It has more acid bite. Than, than the Rosella Purple. It is a bit acidic. The Rosella Purple is not acidic, but that has, it has, oh, it has a smokiness to it on top of the acid that is absolutely delicious. Oh, oh, I'm going to have to grow that one again. This is the Adelaide Festival, which I've already taste tested. This is a beautiful variegated fruit. And I can't wait to have it again. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Also good. I would say it's the mildest of the three, and probably the least flavorful of the three. That is a really good tomato, but the other two are just mind-blowing. Ooh. And now, for the celebrity, which is... You know, I worked on a farm when I was a teenager, and the owner of the farm grew nothing but celebrities. And I just thought this was the most boring tomato. Why would I grow a celebrity? I grew up eating these. So boring. 
look at that tomato. It's absolutely perfect. It's the most beautiful tomato I've ever seen. I've never seen a tomato set such perfect fruit. And I have to confess, this is not my first one that I'm trying for the season. Mm. It's delicious. It was a really, really good tomato. Mm. Great tomato, but I believe it's a hybrid. Don't quote me on that. I think it is, and you can tell because while it is really good, it is not as good as the other three. So I would rank it in terms of flavor. The Celebrity is last, but it's still very good in terms of vigor, production, fruit set, resistance to disease, cracking. It's one of the best tomatoes out there. If you want a reliable tomato that's super easy to grow and you don't have to do anything for or do anything with, the Celebrity is a winner. But I would rank it Celebrity is the fourth, the Adelaide Festival is the third, but I'm going to have to go back for seconds and, and try the Brandy Fred versus the Rosella Purple. An impossible decision. The Brandy Fred may actually have an edge if it was perfectly ripe like the Rosella Purple is. But they're very, very close. I would say the Brandy Fred is only slightly more acidic. But either way, you can't go wrong. And the point that I'm trying to make here is, just because it's a dwarf tomato does not mean that the flavor is dwarf. For all of you who have never heard of the Dwarf Tomato Project, I seriously suggest that you go do some research. It's a great grassroots movement. There's a lot of varieties available in the U.S. There's also a lot of varieties available in Australia. It's a worldwide effort. It's really an amazing thing because everything's guaranteed to be open pollinated so you can save your seeds, share your seeds. It's a really sustainable project and some really great amateur breeders are doing a lot of the work. So it's really fantastic. Please support them. One of the biggest distributors of Dwarf Tomato Project seeds in the U.S. is Victory Seed. I've purchased a lot of seed from them, as well as Southern Exposure Seed Company. I really recommend them, but there, uh, there are other companies out there. So, see who has the most attractive-sounding varieties. But I really recommend that you grow Dwarf Tomatoes. Everyone, thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate your viewership. There's been a big uptick in subscribers recently, and I want to thank you all, all of the original subscribers, the old subscribers, and the new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining. I really hope you enjoy the content. For those of you who haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing to the channel for future updates and more videos like this. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for your viewership. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you on the next video.